Because I would probably do what, what you did when you were up in front, which was you had a, a sheaf of poems and you went through them. In other words, you didn't decide ahead of time what you were going to. How did you, what was going on in your brain when you were picking, picking poems up there? I'm just moody. <laughs> I mean, I'm really moody. Okay. Um, I just, whatever, look at the next one. Uh, and then, oh, okay. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> and the crowd, too. I mean, if you, uh, you guys didn't seem like you wanted to be depressed with, you know, poems about my dead dad or something. <laughs> Just kept it light and easy. And what have you. Is your book about the poem, the stuff you wrote when you're on your bike? Um, a few of them are in there. I, I went and left town and did it and drove around and stuff, and I ran out of money and didn't finish the book so far. How far did you get? I pretty much rode from the Midwest out east and uh, didn't get out west yet. But I drove through the west this past spring with a U-Haul. <laughs> it wasn't quite the same. It didn't corner as well. I couldn't really lean into it. You know. I've got a question for the lady poet. Yes. <laughs> 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 I was curious as to the where you get your inspiration for your for your poetry. Oh, that's a difficult one. Um, my favorite sport is to be a voyeur, which is very very possible in Chicago. Um, I also write public transportation to and from work, so I spend at least two hours of my day staring at people or staring out windows, which is probably um, where I start to take. The notes for a lot of what I do. Um, so it, it comes from here and there, but certainly the city and the people end up sparking something in my mind. I'd like to know for for the American Russell's duo, you know, there's there's all these rumors of you guys leaving town. Want to know if they're true? Can you verify or deny them? I don't know. Yes. Yes. And then, yes, they're true. Then this is this is a lead-in question to another question. Could you just talk about um, being being artists, being musicians, and being in Racine, Wisconsin? The difficulties inherent to that. Just talk a little bit about. It. I haven't been around here very much lately. I mean, we've been here for the last couple of months, but even that, we were out of town for most of it, I feel like. Um, I did grow up here, kind of, mostly. It depends how grown up I am. Um, <laughs> um, what's hard about being a musician in your now? How could Yeah, I don't know. I don't want to say anything bad about people by name. No, I'm just kidding. No, it's just it's 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 generally a bar culture. Uh, it's generally a cover music culture. So, like, if I play, if we were playing at the, you know, at the bar down the block tonight, you know, I would play a, a lot of the same songs, but I would do every other song. Probably I would mix them in with like our old Burnside and Johnny Hooker songs and things like that, that people can be like, oh yeah, I know that one. <laughs> so it's just, it's it's not, um, but but you get paid well here. That's the thing, people want to dog this area, but you know, we can play 40 shows in New York or Ch Chicago in a month and we'll make, what we make up one show here, you know? So, I mean, it's got its upsides, but there's kind of a, there's no room for growth. I guess that's the hard thing. I mean, what you really have to do. Kids had nothing to do here. I had nothing to do back in high school. I used to smash shopping carts. <laughs> like, I had nothing to do. Um, these guys are a little tough. You get the car going, and you hang on to it, and that was like before. Uh, that was before driving, and so all that came out. But, uh, Really clever, but then you know, somebody made a butt ton of money doing just that, so we weren't that clever. But yeah, I mean, there's just nothing for kids to do. I think that's the difference. So if you lived in Milwaukee or Chicago or New York or something, they'd be youth centers and things like well, that. I think it's a lack of audience that's growing. 
I mean, the little part, a little bit that I've seen and received, because I'm not from here. From the little bit that I've seen and received, because I'm not from here. <laughs> um, I think it's, I think it's getting easier, but I, I haven't lived here for all my life. I've only lived here for not even a year, so. It seems like that there's more places to play, more people that are open to it now, but yeah. I don't know how, really how it was before, but it seems to be growing, like this place and, you know, the coffee shop down the street, you know, people have jam sessions and stuff there on mm -hmm. whatever random nights you go in and just start playing, you know, so. So I'd like to sum it up. What's hard here is there's nowhere for a person under, under 21 to come see me somebody play. So like everybody could possibly love a song that I wrote but they would never hear because they're not twenty one. By the time that they are twenty one they'll be so accustomed to not going to see bands that it just won't be a part of their life. I guess that would be somebody about an answer to a thirty second question. In the small ages then just huh? No. No, I mean this this is probably the closest thing. I mean, I, you know, I hosted an open mic at the Ivan Home for six weeks, and then pretty much, mm -hmm. that didn't go real well. <laughs> Who was there? Anyone? Aaron was there. Yeah, I mean, it was just, I mean, They didn't like poets there. Yeah, they didn't like poetry, yeah, they they didn't like poetry at all. So, so we have a, a, a few friends come and read, and it was just like... It was awesome, um, but... Yeah, I, I enjoyed it. The drunk people didn't like it. <laughs> well, poetry and drinking don't really go together unless you, you're the person who... Writing the poetry. <laughs> 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 Who are you? Once you get drunk and you just listen to a guy read a poem, I mean, you don't, that's not part of it. You know? so, it's not really good for bars, I guess. I'm sure it's bad for us. Charles Pukowski or something. Anyways, I'm done now. <laughs> Anyone else? Mm, I kind of have a question for all three, like, all three groups. Um, like, at what age or, like, what time did you guys start, like, you guys performing your music and you guys reading your poetry for other people? <laughs> um, I actually I had the pleasure of reading my poetry at a fairly young age in high school. I actually went to high school in Kentucky. And for all the bad things you can say about Kentucky, I actually um, was involved in a pretty cool creative writing program for our high school students where you did some readings for different groups in high school. So it's 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 been a while, but I should be better at it for as long as it's gone. <laughs> I, I thought you read pretty well. Um, I'm still really nervous. Really? Yeah. Couldn't tell. Um, I was like 19 or 20, something like that. I, uh, yeah, there were some open mics in Milwaukee and I just started going to them and talking. <laughs> uh, I was 13. That's when I played the first show. I was 13. But my dad plays, so I kind of got introduced into it. Uh, grandfathered in. But yeah, I played when I was 13. So. And then Liz, my wife over here, she's been playing Washboard for exactly about six weeks. 